thank God Adam's not home and he's on his way home. So we're gonna do this one really quick. It's like the most crazy that I think that I've experienced because I feel bad too and I don't want him to hear it. Hello my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a first trimester recap, which means that I am whoo, out of the woods. I am feeling so much better. I think I officially hit my second trimester, but I'm not positive because in all of the research I've been doing, I see I've been told that nobody quite knows when the first trimester ends. If it's 12 weeks, 13 weeks, 14 weeks, I don't know. My doctor says it's 13 weeks. I just hit 13 weeks on Thursday, so today is the following Monday, so I'm 13 weeks and, I mean math, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 13 weeks and four days. I'm just about at 14 weeks, so I'm just about out according to everybody. I am so excited to officially be able to tell you as if it's behind me because whew, that was medically and physically the most rough period of my whole entire life. And even the last couple of days, a few of the symptoms have re reared their ugly head and I've experienced some nausea and some car sickness and some other stuff that we'll go through in a minute. If you are interested in my first trimester recap, my symptoms, what I experienced, etc., please keep watching. One of the first symptoms that I recall that stood out to me that I had never heard before was I got vivid memories. And this is in addition to the really vivid dreams that I was experiencing that I talked about in my how I knew I was pregnant before I missed my period and before I took the test and those symptoms. This is a little bit different. These were during the day. I would just be in the middle of normal tasks and I would get this vivid memory from my childhood. Some of them I think were even maybe blocked, but some of them were just sweet, fun memories from things like elementary school and high school and even college things from my childhood with my siblings that were just so vivid that would pop into my mind. And I did some research. I haven't been able to find anybody that says that they experienced this, but it was so sweet and it was so incredible. And I don't know if it just has to do with, you have more blood in your body, so maybe you have more blood flow to your brain. I'm not sure, but I really enjoyed that experience. And I guess that was in the beginning before pregnancy brain kicked in because woof, girl. I am more forgetful than I've ever been in my entire life. I'm like, I can't even think of that word. What's that word? Another symptom that I didn't realize was a symptom of early pregnancy, I thought it was more late pregnancy, was that I had to urinate extremely frequently. Now, my whole entire life, I thought that was a late symptom of pregnancy because baby is big and they're pressing on your bladder and there isn't a lot of space in there. But what I found out was early pregnancy, you also urinate more often because you have more blood flow in your body, you have more fluid in your body, and your kidneys are working double time to get rid of that fluid. So I can go on command. Adam and I will be ready to leave the house. I will go to the bathroom. Two seconds later, I'm like, let me just try one more time. Full bladder, go again. I'm not waking up in the middle of the night right now, but I'm sure that is to come in the very near future as baby gets bigger. Another symptom that I had that was so scary for me was that I would experience blackout type of situations every time I stood up. And this, thank God, only lasted for a week or two. I read that this has to do with blood pressure and blood sugar, but more blood pressure when you're lying down flat, especially after a long night of sleeping, and then you get up too fast, your blood pressure drops. It's just everything in your body is different right now. You have all this extra blood that isn't quite oxy oxygenated. Whew. That's a tongue twister. Oxygenated yet. So things are just funky. It happened to me for about a week where every single time I stood up, I would be like, whoa, I stood up too fast. I'd get a little quick blackout and I'd be fine. I wouldn't fall. It wouldn't be scary. It's happened to me in my past. Not the biggest of deals. The one time that scared the crap out of me, Adam, I don't think Adam was home. I think he was out for a run. I was laying in bed, my own fault. I was laying there playing on my phone for a little while before I decided to actually get up and start my day. When I got up, it's about a foot or two to the bathroom door in our master bedroom. Side note, Adam and I switched sides of the bed, so now I'm closer to the bathroom because I figured as I get bigger and I'm gonna have to go to the bathroom more in the middle of the night, I'd rather have less distance to, God forbid, stumble and fall when I have a big belly. So just a couple of feet to the bathroom. I walk in the bathroom door and I black out completely. And I reached and I leaned over the sink, over the counter with the vanity, and 
everything was just black and I remember my body shaking. I remember my hands just naturally went into fists and I remember this hand shaking. Now I know this from my bodybuilding past. That's your body sending adrenaline through itself really quickly. You got an adrenaline burst so that you, your body's like, oh God, I'm passing out. I'm shutting down. I don't want to do that. I need to stay awake. So psh, adrenaline and you shake. I remember thinking afterwards, like why didn't I scream for Adam? And now thinking back, I don't even think he was home, but in the moment I couldn't even scream for help because honestly, I was just focusing on don't pass out, don't pass out, don't pass out. It was scary, but that was the only time it was really bad. I also read that that can happen in the second trimester. That's something that a lot of women experience. They get dips in blood pressure. Thank God I've been fine ever since those times. Now there have been a couple of times in the past couple weeks where I just got a little bit dizzy here and there, but it's never to the point where like, I feel like I'm gonna pass out. I feel like I'm going to even black out for a second. You know, you're still standing, but you just, your eyes black out. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's very fleeting. And it happened the last time really strong like after they drew blood and I just needed to eat. But other than that, I've been okay so far. Another symptom I've experienced that I thought was only saved for the special third trimester, which I hear is so comfortable, is round ligament pain. So it's a pain, right? I get it on my right side and it's kind of a stabbing pain. I'll get it a lot if I hang, like I think I, it's time for me to stop hanging on the bar, but up until now it's been okay. The first time I ever heard of round ligament pain was when my workout partner was pregnant. We worked together as well. So I remember she was really upset and she called me into a conference room and she was crying and she thought she was miscarrying because she was having that pain. Winds up, it's just the ligaments are stretching. It starts very early because I've learned that Everything in your pelvis is stretching and shifting and moving since the day you get pregnant. Those bones are softening. Your body is fighting and it's preparing from day one to push this baby out basically, to carry the baby and to push it out. So that pain is normal. If you experience it, I would still talk to your doctor. You know, if you're getting cramping or stabbing or shooting pains right here, but mine's just round ligament. I did some searches on how to stretch it after I work out and it's helped tremendously. And honestly, I just don't do the things that make it hurt. So now that hanging is hurting it, I'm gonna have to check that one off the list until after baby, but that's totally fine. There's other things I could do. And by hanging, by the way, for you guys that are new here, I'm talking about pull-ups and I'm talking about working out. I'm still really into working out. I was a fitness competitor quite a few years ago, but I'm really into CrossFit and gyms and workouts and I'm working out within reason as much as my doctor is allowing me and as much as I could possibly do to keep my breathing and everything in check. Another symptom that I didn't write down, but you guys are well aware, I cannot breathe ever. I come up one flight of stairs, I walk around the house and I am short of breath. Worst, honestly, is talking. Like I went for a two mile run this morning and I was fine because I was pacing myself and I was breathing with my steps. But talking, I run out of breath really fast. Walking up steps is the worst offender. Yes, the baby's triggering my asthma, but I haven't had experiences like I did on the video I was talking about where I had the scary day where I couldn't catch my breath. Those are few and far between and those are the asthmatic days, but other days like right now I feel perfectly fine. I can breathe perfectly fine. It's just, it's a little bit more difficult to breathe because of the pregnancy. I think also that has to do with more blood in your system that isn't quite all the way oxygenated yet. That's Adam's theory. We're gonna go with it. But I heard that unfortunately, this does not get better. It actually gets worse through the second trimester as baby moves up and gets bigger and it kind of smushes your lungs a little bit. And then you finally get relief at the very end when baby drops and is ready to descent for landing. Another thing that I briefly experienced, but my poor mother suffered with this horribly. And I recall because I was 10 years old when she was pregnant with my second to youngest sister. She had a severe amount of excess saliva in her mouth. Now I got it for about a week where it was just like, I would have to swallow a little bit more and it was kind of gross, but it was never to the point where I couldn't handle it or I would drool or anything like that. Although I did drool a lot in my sleep in the beginning, TMI. And that is the last time I'm gonna say TMI because we are mostly all girls here or guys who can handle these things. And pregnancy has a lot of crazy things going on with your body that I never even knew were a thing. I never experienced and a lot of them are icky. So we're friends and there's no such thing as too much information. 
at this point because we're going to talk about drooling and bowels and you know last time i said gi and people from other countries didn't even understand what i was talking about and i was just trying to nicely say constipation so it's all going out the window and your girl's going to get real a lot of drooling at night in the beginning that's kind of ceased but for about a week i had a lot of extra saliva where i would just chew gum to help it and it helped a lot when my mom experienced this it was her entire first trimester and she would have to spit into tissues i'm sorry that's disgusting but she would and it would just every like 10 seconds she would just be spitting into a tissue poor thing thank god adam's not home and he's on his way home so we're gonna do this one really quick i was going to save it to the end because it's like the most crazy that i think that i've experienced because i feel bad too and i don't want him to hear this i have gone through a phase it's not over where i do not like being touched whatsoever especially my chest my back and my neck I hate it and Adam is so affectionate and I normally love it. This has nothing to do with my feelings for him. I am so deeply and madly in love with him. I'm obviously very hormonal. I'm going to make myself cry. However, personally, I think it's because all of your sen senses are heightened. So that's why like, you're nauseous and you feel gross all the time. So anything that touches you with like touch, you know, feeling just is heightened and for some reason it's too much especially the back of my neck it's just it grosses me out and i haven't told adam because i don't want to hurt his feelings but when it was at the worst when i was probably eight to ten weeks i would literally push him off of me and i felt so bad but i just couldn't handle it like it would make me nauseous sometimes and i remember one night he fell asleep i was laying on my left side and he was behind me and he was breathing on the back of my neck and i had to get up and move because it was making me so nauseous and it was grossing me out. And please, somebody in the comments tell me that I am not alone and you've experienced this before because I feel terrible. But here's the weird other symptom that goes along with this, but it's the polar opposite. My libido increased tremendously during the first trimester. After the first couple weeks where I was really sick and I was like, just and nobody come near me. I feel horrible and I just want to sleep this off for 12 weeks. But after that because like i said all of my senses are heightened so the good stuff that comes along with having sex feels really 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 good as long as he kissed me on my lips when he went for my neck and he went for the back of my neck i would just kind of like redirect him towards my mouth because i did not like the way that it felt oof i did not like is the world's biggest understatement like it feels disgusting to me and other women have told me it makes them even gag and throw up Anybody? Imagine your significant other saying, I don't like when you touch me right now. As much as as women, we can comprehend it because everything in our body is different. I don't know that he would be able to genuinely comprehend that and not take that personally and think that something was wrong with him or with us. And that's, again, not it whatsoever. I, I hate that it's happening. It's just happening. It's just part of this. I've heard it passes throughout the pregnancy. There's other women that said that they had it all nine months. We'll see. Hopefully I'm one of the lucky ones. Now that we have that behind us and he's not home yet, thank God. I don't know that he watches my videos, but we're going to find out after this. <laughs> Another yucky symptom is that your girl cannot poop. So I had awful morning sickness for about eight weeks where all I wanted to do was sleep. I was so nauseous. My stomach was sour and burning all the time. There were times that I felt like I had to pull over the car and throw up because at that point, Adam still wasn't driving. I was always the driver. I would always get motion sickness for about 10 minutes when I started driving and then it would kind of get better. And here's the weird thing. Now that he does drive, I 100% always get motion sickness in the passenger seat the whole entire time he's driving. I have to suck a sour pregnancy pop and just kind of put my head down. I don't know if it's just because I haven't been in the passenger seat for so long and it's got nothing to do with the pregnancy or if pregnancy's triggered it. I am not sure, but whew, it's real. But anyway, after eight weeks, I got two days of relief. I felt great. I felt amazing. I could drink water again because that was another one. We'll get to that. All of a sudden, two days later, I got constipated. And let me tell you how awful that was. That is my definition of torture. So according to my mother, when I was younger, that was a issue that I always struggled with. But as I got older and I got into fitness and I increased my fiber, my fruits, my vegetables, and my water intake, I, I worked really hard to not have an issue with that. I will avoid foods that cause it. For me, it's bananas. There was nothing I could do to get rid of it this time. At 
first I thought it's because I don't really eat dairy and it was Adam's birthday and our dear friends brought him some presents and they brought him a huge slice of cheesecake and he gave me a bite, it was so good, I took a second bite. So I thought maybe it was the dairy that was causing the problem. When I went to the doctor, I was like, I haven't pooped in five days. And the problem with that was I was eating all the foods that I know how to fix that issue if I ever have it. So I was eating all kinds of squash. I was eating greens. I was eating zucchini, which is also squash. But you name it, if it could help dates, figs. But it was all building up in my stomach because it wasn't... I wasn't releasing it, it was all just in there and day in and day out and everything I ate, roughage and fiber. And the more this went on, the more tired I would get. And then as the days progressed, I would get cranky because it's just, if you guys have to deal with constipation, it is one of the worst experiences of your life. My doctor and all the women that I've ever spoken to said it's just part of first trimester. Basically, your body slows down processing food and digesting food, so baby has more time to absorb those nutrients when it's first starting to build its bones and its organs in the first trimester. I had a girlfriend who is an angel on my shoulder who suggested just increasing my magnesium a little bit, and I did, and ever since then, it's been Thank you, Jesus. According to my doctor and other mommies that I've spoken to, second trimester, it lets up. And then third trimester, as baby pushes down on everything and, and things are kind of moving around, you have to deal with it all over again. But for now, issue is pretty much resolved. Another issue I experienced was any kind of liquids would make me sick. Except for I'm allowed to drink one cup of coffee in the morning, according to my doctor, I could get that down easily. So Adam suggested, why don't you try to drink your water warm? that worked perfectly for two days, then warm water would make me sick. One of my girlfriends suggested coconut water. Got that down, loved it for about two days. I could take little sips. I was able to like pretty much stay hydrated. Two days later, that made me sick. Another friend suggested vegetable broth. I tried that, I loved it for two days then that made me sick. So basically it was just waiting for this experience to pass. People did recommend tea, especially peppermint tea. That made me the most sick of anything. And it, I thought maybe it was tea on an empty stomach because tea on an empty stomach prior to baby always kind of made me feel like vitamins on an empty stomach. Like my stomach it would just give me the, my sisters and I call it the spitties where you get all the saliva before you're throwing up, before you get sick. And so tea didn't work for me either. It was just something that had to pass. Thank God I can drink water. I was able to even chug a liter first thing in the morning because I try to get my water in early so I don't have to experience getting up in the middle of the night. But two days ago, that started to bother me again. So I'm just going slow, sipping throughout the day, getting in as much as I can and going from there. I also experienced a little bit of sciatica pain in my first trimester. Now I know that this typically doesn't happen until later. I've always had an issue with sciatic pain. I must have like a weak sciatic nerve or maybe I know everybody's sciatic nerve. Here's fun fact in geek, geek mode because I'm an anatomy and physiology nerd, but everyone's sciatic nerve goes through their pelvis in a different spot. Some people it goes internally, some people externally, some people over a little bit. So it could just be where mine's placed, but I've always had issues with it. Now I think my sciatic issues early on had more to do with constipation and pushing, sorry, versus anything to do with the baby or the pregnancy. It was kind of like a secondary symptom related to this symptom that wasn't really related to the pregnancy. Like this was related to the pregnancy, but this was related to this. Did that just make no sense? What am I, what, what? <laughs> do you follow me? Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna speed this up because this is getting long, but I also experienced Acne. Now my acne was mostly all here, my chin, and like a teeny bit up here on my forehead. I don't know if that was from a mask, from wearing masks all the time. There were a couple of times that I wore makeup under my mask, but I have it covered pretty well. I'll put a picture of it when it was pretty bad. I knew I wanted to make this video, so I took a picture. A lot of people are telling me that that is a sign, or an old wives tale, a sign of a girl because all of the extra estrogen from my body as well as the baby's hormones create some acne. This is so weird. This started for me in the beginning. I had some seriously weird body odor, okay? And my body odor was not just my armpits. I smelled down there. The only way that I could describe it is a homeless woman 
that ate a lot of Cheerios. Now I've never been pregnant before. This is my first baby, but I remember there were a couple of times where I just kind of knew I'm like, I smell pregnant. If that makes sense, like I feel like intuitively, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I feel like the HCG, the pregnancy hormone in my body had raised so much that it was coming out of my down there, if that makes sense. This would be like immediately after I shower. I remember one time I showered because I would have to shower immediately in the morning or I couldn't stand myself. Like I was getting so grossed out by the smell of my own self. So I remember I showered, Adam and I drove to work out. Didn't do anything in between. It's not like I was sweating or anything like that. And during the warm up, every time I squatted, so my nose was replacing the spot where my girl parts were, you know, I was going right into that stench or opposite, I was pulling myself up. So nose was going down, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I gotta stop because first of all, heightened sense of smell, but second of all, woo, it only lasted a couple of days. It started prior to prenatals. When I started taking prenatals, it got 10,000 times worse. I had to switch my brands a couple of times, but this only happened for literally a week in the beginning. So my hypothesis could be right, could be wrong. I have no idea. Anatomy, physiology nerd with a sports medicine background. That is my educated medical not really medical professional guess. And the last one was a heightened sense of smell, which you guys all know, first trimester, that's a huge thing, and some serious, serious food cravings. Now, along with the sense of smell came a couple of food aversions, but I'm not gonna talk about my cravings in this video because there were so many. I'm gonna make its own dedicated video just for your entertainment about all of my cravings so far and the things that I gave into and the things that I didn't and the weird ones and yes pickles were involved and I never in my life would have thought that I would have craved pickles but my doctor at my last appointment told me why. I didn't bring it up he brought it up talking about his wife's cravings and stuff he was so great. Anyway I'll, I talked all about him why I love him how much I love him in my 12-week appointment video that I will post in the cards up there for you guys and if for some reason that doesn't work they will be in the cards or the end screen at the end of this video. I love you guys please let me know what you think in the comments. I love 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 absolutely adore all of the wonderful comments support and love that you guys are showing me on my pregnancy journey videos. I don't think this is gonna turn into a pregnancy video, but I have somebody in the comments tell me that they are effing here for it if it does, and I can't even tell you how much that made my day because I never thought, oh my God, I'm gonna make myself cry. That's in the second trimester video, but I never thought that this would even be in my wheelhouse, in my cards. I didn't know Adam would be with me, let alone us being able to have a baby. So to be able to share this journey with you, to teach you, but also to feed you hope and show you that anything you want in life is possible, then I am so here for it too. I love you guys. Please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. It just helps me so much out in YouTube. It helps me out so much in YouTube. Wow. And also there's that video I was talking about if you want to see our 12 week checkup vlog, if we found out the gender, any genetic issues, heard the heartbeat, etc. right there. Subscribe right there by clicking that little circle or the red box below. Love, love, love you guys so very much and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.